Podcasters Roundtable, round 92. And as soon as I get to the website, I'll tell you what I called it. <laughs> uh, the state of podcast consumption 2017. So I mixed up a couple of things there. The state of podcasting, which we usually see at one of the annual podcast conferences by some friends of ours, Blueberry, Libsyn, Spreaker guys, and the uh, podcast consumption, what do they call the podcast consumer 2017 from Edison, which they've been doing forever now, uh, at least some form of research on the podcast space for a long time. And I believe what, like 2006 or something. So I mixed up those two things. We're going to talk about really what about these numbers that just recently came out and this is a little bit different round, but we have a new round tabler. So we're golden and a good one who's done his own 45 minutes on this very topic. So you'll, you'll want to check that out as well. If you're into this topic, we'll see, but, uh, yeah, let's go right to the new round tabler. Matthew, welcome to your first round table. Thank you. Thank you. Very excited to be here and uh, excited to talk about these numbers again with hopefully a little bit of a clearer head and a little bit less, uh, not anger, but gusto. We were very, anger. we were very, we were excited after watching the presentation and trying to react to it in live, you know, live. Perfect. Well, we're live on a Monday, which is very different. I'm mailing it in my hat and a free t-shirt. And so if you're watching the video, podcastersroundtable.com slash live, you should be, or the YouTube channel, or just go check it out. You can see what everyone looks like. And then when you meet us in person, just come up and say hi, because that's coming up. We have conferences coming up. That'll be a good time. When you spot Mr. Dave Jackson, make sure you say hi, Dave. Welcome back. Yeah, Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. Glad to be here. This should be fun to uh, hash these numbers just a little deeper. Yeah, Matthew, I forgot to ask, what is your podcast? Oh, uh, I've got a few. So I run the pod to pod podcast, the service of pod2pod.com. And I do the podcast bulletin, which is part of my production company, the podcast consultant.com. Nice. Yeah. Pod to pod. I believe the round table's been featured there several times and it might be on like a calendar there, but I'm screwing it up by being here on a Monday. So, you know, we want to keep you, keep you, keep you, uh, on your toes, pod to pod. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you know, if you're not subscribed to pod to pod, the email newsletter, you have to go because they just bring together all the podcasting news that you want and it shows up in your email. So I think I'm on like maybe three email lists and that's definitely one of them. So you guys and gals should get over there and do that as well co-host Daniel J. Lewis. Welcome back. Thank you, Ray. I'm always happy to be on a round table with us and discussing podcasting. And this is certainly, um, I'm going to have some opinions, but I want to say up front, Tom Webster, I deeply respect you and your great work <laughs> that you do with Edison Research. So the ripping apart that we might do or that I might <laughs> do specifically is not at you. It's only at your baby. But uh, Tom's used to that, right? I mean, he puts himself out there for feedback. He goes on shows and talks about it. And and, you know, even new media show, I think it was on, they talk about it and they, they'll give him a hard time as well. So Tom is a great sport and he's confident in his numbers. So I don't think he has to worry about it. So that leaves us free to uh, rip away. I say and tear apart. It makes it better. It makes these numbers better when you put it in different perspectives, right? From podcast producers, podcast researchers, podcast listeners. So that's what we're doing. We are in the chair of the producer today. We're all sitting behind some kind of beautiful microphone. <laughs> so we're going to take our podcast pitchforks. I think the other side of my microphone is pointy. I just stab it right there. Stab <laughs> holes into the research. You What's know, up, actually, I just realized here on this panel, we are representing the four most popular, most recommended podcasting microphones. Ray on the High mm -hmm. PR 40 Dave on the ATR 2100 USB. Matthew on the Electro Voice RE20, and I'm on the Electro Voice RE320. The only thing we're missing is a Shure SM7B. Rob Greenley couldn't be here tonight. Otherwise, right. he'd be our Shure <laughs> SM7B. Right. We'll work on something to aim for. It's like the uh, the round table jackpot. <clears throat> I feel like our little squares should spin around and it lands <laughs> on which microphone. We got them all. Quads. All right. So the Podcast Consumer 2017. And... Now, is this, we've heard of, what do we have? We have the podcast consumer, we have share of ear, and we have just the Edison. The share, infinite dial infinite is the Infinite dial. One. So are these, are the podcast numbers in all of these? There is podcast numbers in all of them. Are they different? Is there different stuff here? Before we dive in, just generally, is there different stuff? It's a different look at the same data. That's what it is. So even in the webinar, when Tom presented all of this, he pointed out that all of this is from the infinite dial study. 
This is taking a deeper look into specifically the podcast consumer and all of those that identify as podcast consumers and what type of people they are. Matthew, you said you seemed like you wanted to get in there. I was basically going to say the same thing. I know Infinite Dial includes a lot of the same slides that we'll see at the beginning, and then this goes a little bit deeper uh, as you go further into the presentation, breaks down a little bit more of the attitude and the, um, you know, the ways that uh, podcast consumers really take in this content. Yeah, and if we consumed this last year, if we looked at it, and I believe, I don't know, we may have covered it in some capacity here in Roundtable, but is there much different here before we dig in? Not that I can tell. Uh, there is a lot of information about the podcast consumer, that is after all the study, but when it comes to information about the actual consumer, like their education level, employment, that kind of stuff, there wasn't any comparison with previous years. Right. And so if you want to actually, you can go to the Edison research site. They only have, they don't have the presentation that we can find. They have the, uh, the slide deck or the PowerPoint. You can look at hashtag podcon 17. I think they live tweeted the whole thing. So, and there's a lot of good responses there. Uh, but just digging into this, I'll say just up front, if you're not familiar with this, uh, it says the methodology, January, February of 2017, Edison research conducted a national telephone survey of 2000 people age 12 or older using random digit dialing techniques. Is it, is it bad that they use the telephone? Is that a good method to reach podcast consumers? That's a great question because <laughs> I, Does I it think mean I smartphones or do we mean like attached to the wall? Only Dave has one telephone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but well, the other thing is when was the last time you actually called someone and they answered the phone? Never. I'm not answering any phone. No, it's, you have to text me first and then maybe kind of thing. It's, I mean, I'm weird. I won't answer my phone, but most, I know a lot of people, they don't use the phone. They text everything. So, yeah. So the interviews were 51% landline. There we go. That's right in front of my face. Come on, Ray. 49% cell phone. So it's split. So at least if you've got a smartphone, you may be talking to someone who has podcasts on their phone. So it's half and half. So maybe, I guess that's pretty good. We want to reach those people who I guess aren't listening to podcasts, find out what's going on. So um, the off the survey was in English and Spanish, which is interesting. Uh, I think Latin America is a good, there's a, a really emerging podcast market down there. Um, over there, depends on where you're data weighed to national 12 plus population figures over my head. And Just that what they did is that they smoothed out their demographics. So it matches the national population. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I did, they did at one time, I think on a recent episode say Daniel is the technical one. So. This is why you have co-hosts, people. This is how this works. <laughs> this makes for better quality content. And the series has been covering a wide range of digital media topics since 1998. Obviously not podcasting until probably 06 or so. So the first slide up, um, I don't know. Are you guys following along on these slides? Daniel, are you following along? Yeah, and you can get these if you if you just search Google for the podcast consumer, you'll see these different yeah. years of study. So I actually have 2016s also up in case there's something that we want to compare back to 2016 if we don't have that on the same slide. Gotcha, cool. Do you want to hit on this first one? Awareness of the term podcasting. Okay, this is my first, first pet peeve. <laughs> right the off the word, bat, see? This is good. We're already at it. The word podcasting, I-N-G, at the end, is the wrong word to be asking people about, I think. Uh, because now, you know, this, looking back at 2005, when Steve Jobs, in a keynote, announced that podcasts would be coming to iTunes, I recently included a snippet of that uh, keynote in my special 10-year anniversary episode. And I didn't realize until re-watching it that even Steve Jobs said, podcasting. You know, it's funny, I watched iTunes. that last night too, because of part of that 3 a.m. thing I was doing, I was watching some of that <laughs> stuff. Did you did you include the part where Adam Curry swears? That was a great moment. No, At his I didn't that part out. Awesome. <laughs> but um, so th my pet peeve here is the word podcast is better to ask people, are you familiar with a podcast? Because the term podcasting is really about the art, the technique, the process of creating a podcast. So like if you're looking at a forum and you see a section that's called podcasts and you see a section that's called podcasting and you want to chat about a podcast or share news about a podcast, then it goes in the podcasts section. If you want to talk about the technology, if you have a question about podcasting, if you're a podcaster, you need help from other podcasters, then that conversation should go in the podcasting 
category. So thus, my pet peeve is that they ask people, what's your awareness of the term podcasting? That's like asking people, what's your awareness of the term book writing, instead of just asking, what's your familiar familiarity with books? So outside the semantics of it all, do you think <laughs> that this affected, do you think this affects numbers or maybe slightly or? It may slightly i i know that yeah i'm fussing it's just a, over it's just a time. personal pet peeve right i i get what you're saying and it should be you well, know, i get that i mean if you, uh, if you went up to somebody and said are you familiar with radio they might say oh well yeah but if you say are you familiar with broadcasting they might go do you mean like tv stuff or you know so yeah, this is a good point yeah well but those are two different words radio and broadcasting podcast and podcasting I, I would think that the audience would be able to you know differentiate or at least yeah. surmise podcasting is the art of creating podcasts. That being said, I mean, the fact is it's, it's going up. So according to yeah, this, it's yeah. 168 million people who are aware of it. And we saw two big jumps from 2015 to 16 and again, 16 to 17. And I mean, that coincides obviously with the, probably with the national attention that more shows have been getting, you know, the pop culture discussions of serial and S town and Marin and you know hardwick and everything that npr is doing so i mean at the very least regardless of whether it's podcast or podcasting we've all got to be encouraged yeah and yeah. i think that at some level there's some type of inertia that will take over at some point we hit a point that there's not going to be this explosive growth right podcasting is known for being slow and steady growth and we're seeing that in this chart here but at some point you have so many shows you have so many people listening that maybe some of this upward tick is also a process a product of inertia like you said more sort of inventory available more people talking about it i mean we don't really know you know a lot of people say oh it was cereal but you know i think that they have said in the past that that cereal didn't actually you know while it was wildly popular and got a lot of media attention it didn't necessarily bring a ton of people new people to podcasting yeah cereal was released at the end of 2014 and their studies are done at the beginning of yeah. each year so from uh, in 2015, there was a 1% bump up from 48 to 49% from 2014 to 2015. It was 2015 to 2016 that really saw the big bump. That is after Serial's heyday. So you can't say that Serial was responsible for the boom in podcasting. There wasn't a boom. Yes, these last couple of years, we've seen the biggest growth. But I think it's all of the attention, like you were saying. So the number uh, estimated 168 million that's americans yes yeah this is all everything about this is based on american numbers yeah. so that's a lot of people right they're aware of the term podcasting they might have no clue what podcast means but <laughs> they're aware of the aware of the term podcasting I, yeah i'd be surprised to see how many of those actually know how to use it because even i run into people today who are like you know i know what that is i just i don't know how to do it um, which is, is frustrating, but at least they're, they're more curious. Well, we have the next slide, which is ever listened to a podcast, right? And we got 40% up from 36. And this is that same sort of stair step growth that we've seen, um, going up 4%, a nice little jump, all those 3% the year before that 3% before the year that 3% more year for that. So steady growth, but 112 mi mi million people ever listened. So that's a lot of people who listened. Doesn't mean it's a lot of people that 112 million stick around every month, which we'll find out, right? The quick math on that is that is two thirds of people who are familiar with podcasts have actually ever listened to podcasts. Cool. And a monthly podcasting month. Look, it got me monthly podcasting, listening, <laughs> monthly podcast, listening, uh, 24 percent, 67 million of that 112 million. Is that, is that what's going on there? Yeah. And I mean, do we care about monthly? Fortunately, we drill down further than that. Like, well, what? to me, that it just bothers me that the slide before we were up to 40 percent have have tried one and we only have 24 percent that are sticking around for at least one a month. I was it gets like, it's worse, Dave. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like once a month. Are you really a podcast listener if you listen once a month? Yeah. What's going on there? Well, they say not listened once a month. It's have listened within the last month. Within the last month. Uh, even then, like, I guess, if you, even if you follow this show, you're going to get two a month. <laughs> well, I think some folks aren't sure if what they listened to was a podcast. You know, there's that Audible versus podcast debate. There's the, if somebody's watching this on YouTube, is that technically still a podcast, you know, consumer nope. at that moment? 
And then also, I, I mean, more abstractly thinking, I think there's still a lot of technical barrier to entry. I think people are frustrated by the podcasting process. You know, it's sure it's easy. It's on your phone. You go subscribe, hit play. But I, I know a lot of people, they, they, you even show them how to do it and they find it still tricky to get into it. So they just revert back to their old media consumption ways, radio, satellite, CD, well, not CD, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I had a, uh, a neighbor who is, I think he said he was 72 and he finally today was walking around and I had my little podcast shirt on. He goes, all right, I have to ask. And I'm like, what? And he's like, what the heck is a podcast? <laughs> and I said, oh, it's like a little internet radio show. I said, do you have a smartphone? No, he has a flip phone, you know, yeah. but I asked him, I go, what's your, he was into uh, model airplanes. I'm like, all right. So I type in model airplanes into iTunes or the podcast app and hit search. I'm going, there you go. And I hit play. He's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Not cool enough for me to buy a smartphone, but okay. At least I know what it is now. Um, but that was kind of interesting that uh, I hadn't done that in a while where you have somebody who's like, okay, what is it? Doggone it. Yeah. I think, I think you said, somebody said it before, but momentum, I think is an issue with podcasting. Those folks who are into it, stay into it. Those who have not quite captured it, um, it's it's not top of mind to you know to work through all those steps to actually be a consistent listener. Well, yeah, I mean that's probably your first podcast. It's so critical what you get in front of first, right? I mean, if you get in front of something bad because someone recommends it, or you just happen to try it, or I mean, not necessarily even bad. It just doesn't. It's not the content for you. I'm not necessarily willing to come back unless maybe someone's like, no, you really have to check out this show. You know, I don't know. So. For me, it's from my own perspective, it's impossible to tell because when I heard it, I was amazed by the technology, not the content. So that kept me looking for other stuff. Um, I don't know. You guys did the first show you were here. Was that that? See, I think that mostly what hooked you guys is sort of the same stuff. It's not the, wasn't the content. We're a different breed, early day podcasters. Yeah, I mean, for me, I just heard the voice of Adam Curry come out of my speakers and I'm like, I know that guy. I remember right. him. <laughs> and I was sucked in. But I mean, I guess not much we can do about that. I mean, it's, I it'd guess, make kind, better content, but <laughs> it'd be kind of like going to a restaurant and getting a really crappy meal and having a friend of yours going, seriously, you got to go back though. They're really good. And you're like, no, no, I've been there. I've tried it. And now you got to go, no, no, you got to try the whatever. Yeah. For me, it was the content. I was listening to radio during a commute. And then I discovered podcasts on the radio. It was politics, finances, relationships, and local issues, mostly stuff I didn't care about. So finding a podcast, like a podcast completely about tech news that was by people who actually knew what they were talking about, that amazed me and I loved it. And other things, grammar and, and uh, other aspects of technology and design. So I was hooked in by the content and the method, the personality behind the content. And I mean, how to choose a watermelon. I mean, come on, that's like instant right. hit that you were just drawn into. <laughs> Weirdly Inside enough, I was... I was producing content long before I became a real podcast consumer. Even when I was producing them, I would still get in my car and not listen because my technology hadn't caught up with my vehicle. And so it took me a while to really get into it and to try it out. But right. Once I found the first show that I liked, then yeah, I wanted to find out and find more content. I jumped away for a sec. Did we get past monthly podcast listening? Next slide is gender, which has this changed much, Dan? You said it, you have no. It hasn't years. changed since last year. Fifty-six percent men, forty-four percent women. And I'm, you know, it makes me wonder just because we've grown, so we've obviously grown at equal amounts, right? Like, it's like we're one, we're chasing the other, and it's just the same distance between each other. So there's more men and women here. It's just the ratio seems to be about the same. But it feels, I mean. It feels like more women-led podcasts these days. So this is different. This is the consumer versus the podcaster. Do you think, I wonder what the numbers are for podcast creators. I would suspect that if you were charting that, there would be more growth in the, in the women podcasters in the last few years. It just seems that way. But I mean, I'm coming from a biased perspective. Um, I, I'd like to believe that is true. Yeah. And we certainly have seen a lot of attention paid to getting more women to become podcasters and certainly the rise of very talented, very strong women podcasters. But at the same time, when so much new content is being created and so much that we're not talking about, I have a feeling that proportion probably isn't changing all that much. We're just not talking about as many of the, the new men podcasters out there as often. And it is a bit of a stereotypical thing. Typically, it's guys who gravitate toward the coolest technological things first. I know that's a stereotype, Wait, cool? but it's true. 
<laughs> the, no, the technologies we gravitate okay. toward are cool. I didn't say okay. we're cool. <laughs> and um, so that's not to say it's like an intelligence level thing or anything like that. It's like, what kind of people are interested in sports cars? Well, typically, it's the guys who are more interested in sports cars than the ladies. It doesn't yeah, but I would argue market. that's that's society driven. I would argue that's marketing and how we're brought up. And there's all kinds of stuff that goes into that, sociologically speaking that makes you think it's in your DNA that you're drawn to something like an action figure, but I bet you it's social. So there are, we don't want to go down that rat hole, but uh, <laughs> stuff to think about there. Uh, mon monthly podcast listening. Wait, we did this. What What is this? Yeah, this is broken down. Uh, we're on slide seven, by the way, if you're following along at home. Yep. Uh, this is broken down through the past years, looking at um, the percentage of genders who say they have listened to a podcast within the last month. So this year, 2017, it's this is not of anyone who ever listened to a podcast. It's within the last month, 27% male, 21% female. Um, the ratio uh, is about the same. Looking at these, like you see the stair step method, um, mm -hmm. it's kind of about the same where just as many new men are listening to podcasts as new women are, it seems. Cool. And then we get into age. Um, do we have, this is also something that's remained fairly consistent, hasn't it? I believe so. I'm looking for that slide in the prior presentation. So this is monthly, this is again, monthly yeah. podcast, podcast consumers 12 plus, and you've got the bulk going 18 to 34. I mean, it's a big range. Like there is a dr dramatically different person in the 18 to 24 year old to the 25 to 35 year old right okay yeah. this this has changed uh which actually the next slide slide nine shows the change so i don't have to keep flipping back and forth the biggest <laughs> jump being in the age 25 to 54 demographic that jumped from 24 percent to 31 percent a big it's the biggest jump when you look at this chart the biggest jump of anything besides so those, the very first those people who grew up when podcasting began were younger, right? They were in that 12 to 24, less likely to listen to podcasts. Now podcasting is coming of age and so are they, they're shifting. I mean, pod, I, I don't know how much I would have listened to a podcast pre 21 years old or something. I mean, I don't know. Like, I think to what you're saying is, is a good point. You're getting older, your tastes are a little bit more mature, but I think podcasting is also caught up with those more mature tastes. So, you know, people aren't just looking for very niche or, for lack of a better term, very weird podcasts about hyper specific things, you know, they still want their mainstream media podcasts. And we see more of those companies jumping in, creating content that usurps what they might be listening to on radio or, you know, watching on television or something like that. What's think, interesting on this is age 12 to 24 has stayed the same from 2016 to 2017. So is it that those, uh, 23 and 24 year olds are then being bumped into the next demographic so we have the exact same number of people young kids getting into listening to podcasts as those who are growing out of that demographic that's a good question and for me what i think about what i listened to when i was a teenager i was listening to music yeah, non-stop and so they don't play the kind of stuff that i want to listen to on the radio and I'm, I'm just, I've had it with classic rock because it's just, I was laughing today because it was literally the same song that I've heard 8 million times. And I was like, I wonder, for me at least, that's why I listen to podcast. I just can't take the radio. I, I really don't need to hear Two Tickets to Paradise ever again. <laughs> Sorry, any money, but no. Um, so, and I just wonder if that age group then is like, well, I can't find anything to listen to on the radio. So they tune to podcasting. Well, and I wonder... If in going back to the music, also the rise of more internet streaming stations has made, you know, more viable music available to a younger population. It's not just I've got to go to the radio and listen to what the corporate world tells me to. I can literally create whatever playlist I want, see right. what my friends are sharing, see what my favorite stars are sharing. So, you know, while podcasting has made more content available, music has also become more readily available in a more, you know, consumer friendly way. No way. I used to go to the mall and I made a tape out of all the, the, <laughs> the choices I had in the machine. It was amazing. 
Did you record off the radio, make your I, own uh, at-home mix? I recorded, I called in so I could record myself on the radio. Those are the days before you could <laughs> turn on a microphone and, and be on the air, so to speak. One of Do the you, other interesting things I just noticed on this slide, number nine, is that in 2016, age 12 to 24 was 27 percent age 25 to 54 was 24 percent this year it's still 27 percent for that younger group but the um, slightly older group has overtaken the younger group so before it was only the young kids i mean not only the young kids younger 12 to 24 year olds more of them were listening to podcasts than older people adults um, mm -hmm. middle age and, and older um, but now it's the other way around the 25 to 54 year olds more of them are listening to podcasts now than before that is interesting the back and forth of that graph because like you like if 2013 the older group was higher than the younger group and then as you move forward the younger group took over and yeah you're right it, it it's it's an interesting switch and 25 to 54 is a big gap. Yeah, these are I, big. Uh, I do have to wonder. 55 you know, and everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Why do they split it at these ages? Is this simply standard demographic ages to split things? Yeah, maybe. Like based and, on some kind of research, like uh, someone who's 24 is significantly different from someone who's 25? Or, or who knows? Maybe the data gets crazy when you break it down so far. Uh, who knows? Yeah. Tom, you, we know you're watching. Nice. No, you can answer. Uh, <laughs> podcast consumers household income. Now I know what I did listen to, uh, Matthew, of your your coverage of this. This was this was kind of you guys talked about this a lot. Yeah, um, we we definitely liked this slide. Um, you know, both Glenn and I are interested in the advertising world, and so you know what this says is that the podcast consumer, uh, forty five percent of them make one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year or more, whereas the general population only thirty five percent do. So. We were definitely interested in how attractive that podcast listener is to advertisers. And clearly they tend to make more money. And as we're going to see in the slides, they tend to be better educated. Um, and we'll even see they're more engaged. So, it, you know, these next few slides really just speak to why podcasting is such an attractive medium for brands to, uh, you know, find audiences and, and find consumers. And again, looking at 2016, uh, comparing this. It looks like in 2017, the podcast consumers are even wealthier. In 2016, 41% were making 150,000 or more. 2017, it's 45%, 4% uh, jump there. And uh, it's also it's, the, uh, the 75,000 to 100,000 and 100 to 150 increased slightly. This is something we've always talked about. I mean, here's the thing. These these numbers we're talking about are the numbers you'll hear in talks for the next year. They're the numbers you've heard in talks. <laughs> you go to a podcasting conference, everyone's pulling out their favorite slide and they're going to talk about it. And we've talked about this one for a long time. It's one of the, the sort of selling points of podcasting is there people with disposable income are listening. So your advertising may work better, right? Or, you know, things like that. But um, so this Thanks. one has always been sort of a, you know, a, sh a shit skewed towards a higher income. I mean, anyone want to take some dangerously politically incorrect guesses as to why <laughs> why oh, they, we see this? I could take some non-politically correct ones. Well, <laughs> people who tend to make more money tend to be smarter, and people who are smarter want smarter content. Podcasters get deep dives into really fascinating topics that, as Dave and, and Daniel both pointed out, you're not hearing on commercial radio. You're not seeing in broadcast television. So if you want smart content, you got to go to where smart people are producing it, and, and this is the place. And it does take, right now, it does still take a little bit more intelligence in order to get a podcast because it means you have to understand certain finite or certain little details of things and install an app, use that app regularly and such. But is this a chicken and the egg sort of thing? Like, do affluent people listen to podcasts or do podcasts make affluent people? I would say both. I I would yeah. absolutely agree. You know, the Tim Ferrisses of the world are certainly creating a whole new generation of smart entrepreneurs. Um, so I, I would say both are accurate. I will get into some politically incorrect stuff later, though, about podcasting demographics. Don't you worry. <laughs> I, I would be I would even be careful with saying that smarter people make more money. I mean, there's a there's a whole thing about opportunity and just a lot of people are smart and they 
don't get the opportunity they need to make that income. So a slightly politically incorrect. We can, we could go there if we want right now, but, <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, it's tough. I mean, we always get, you always hear the comparison of the NPR crowd, right? That, that, the higher educated, different type of more, just more <sighs> talk about issues and people stuff that are, I mean, if you, if you are not struggling to wonder where your next meal is coming from, you have time to worry about, political issues that are happening abroad or in different parts of your world where you're not saying, where's my next meal coming from? I mean, it makes a little sense that you have more time to educate yourself. Right. So, I mean, again, I, I don't, you guys don't realize I'm a sociologist by training. So <laughs> well, I, I, now I'm going to dive into the politically incorrect, but I'm going to take it the opposite <laughs> way than you might expect. The NPR listener isn't necessarily always rich and affluent. A lot of those folks have taken on very altruistic, types of work, nonprofits, social work, education. So they're not necessarily affluent when you think of the typical NPR listener. Um, so I think podcast specifically draws affluent because you have so many people who are going above and beyond just what is available on public radio. Well, that's good then. I mean, we need to be doing more of what NPR is doing. However, they're attracting a broader audience. We need that. I think that's something to aim for. Well, now, all right, so now I'm going to go into what I was fearing would be the politically incorrect. I fear that what NPR has done to podcasting, though, has also driven away a large portion of potential podcast consumers. Um, uh oh, Dave, Dave is applauding. <laughs> I do. I, I, when I heard this on your show, I was like, I've never thought of that. I'm like, that's a really good point. Do so, do we so. saw on the last slide that 55 and older is still lacking when it comes to podcast consumption. Now, there's probably two good reasons for it. One, podcasting is a technology-rich thing, and, you know, older generations, still not all of them are love technology, and, you know, they like doing things that are comfortable to them, listening to the radio, television. But also, podcasting is so strongly associated with NPR, and NPR is so strongly associated with a progressive left-leaning agenda that I think there's a lot of people out there who think, why am I going to listen to podcasts? Those people don't talk to me the way that I want to be spoken to. Now, I think we're going to see that tide turn soon, especially with, you know, senior kicked off Fox News uh, launching his, you know, focus on podcasting now. Is he? I did not know that. Yeah, he, uh, he's, <laughs> he's taking his show on the road. And apparently tonight, I think he's, you know, making his big oh, podcast boy. specific debut. Oh, careful, careful, what you, careful what you wish for. My goodness. Interesting. Don't, don't touch my media. <laughs> stick with the, stick with the dying medium. Oh man! All right, it's all right. He's gonna he's gonna rely on advertisers here too, and that's not gonna work out, buddy. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna have a Patreon account. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. I, I people are excited to be to back that. If you support him, and you think that what happened to him was unjust, you are willing to get behind him, and oh, I mean, that's your that's your right to do so. Dude, don't get any. Go, you want to be successful? Be extreme. I don't care which way it is. <laughs> I don't care what it is. But here's two things you can do: sell really, really expensive crap. That that stuff never goes in recession. Or be an extremist. I mean, look what happened. Look, yeah, never mind. We won't go politics. <laughs> I mean, look at uh, we're sitting in the middle of that right now. Yeah. Well, Glenn Beck is another example of a guy that left a network to start his own, more or less. So and and. Another guy who started originally started his career as a liberal yeah, and realized and that he could do better. Back to, so. Yeah, but realized he could be doing better by hitting the extreme on the other side. Of course. It's, it's fascinating. It's 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 ugly sometimes. But yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So podcast consumers education. This has seen some change since last year. Uh, the most significant change is in uh, 2016. Of monthly podcast consumers, 22% had high school diploma or less education. In 2017, that number dropped to 15%. Um, the main wow. increase uh, in these uh, one to three years of college is the same. Some grad school or advanced degree went up one percentage. The main increase is in four-year college degree students went from 22% to 27%. What I would now say is it basically equivalent to a high school diploma, <laughs> the four-year degree mm -hmm. feels required at this point. After that, we have employment. So employed full-time, employed part-time, temporarily employed. Anything remarkable here? 
I, I mean, I'd love to know how does this break down to those who are self-employed? I would imagine you don't consider that full-time employment. I mean, well, they... yeah, if that's your only option is full-time, part-time, temporarily unemployed, homemaker, retired student, the only place you can go if you have your own full-time business is employed full-time. But I wish there was a self-employed option on here. I would guess that that would lean very heavy on the podcast consumption side. And it's, again, one of those chicken or the egg things. Do the podcasts inspire people to become self-employed? As it did for me, and I know many, many other people who podcasts have inspired them to become self-employed. Or is it the other way around? Self-employed people tend to consume podcasts more. It's definitely a growing demographic. If you're self-employed, you have the opportunity to listen more, I would say. Maybe. Maybe harder to listen when your boss is, is not you <laughs> Right, does not mean you have extra time to be consuming audio. I mean, I edit for a living, so I can't listen to a podcast during editing. It makes it very <laughs> painful, but yeah. same problem. <laughs> there you go. Weekly podcast listening. I'm more interested in this. I mean, and sorry, monthly podcast listener. I don't care about you very much, but when you start listening weekly now we're talking, I feel like we're talking about subscribers here. And our number is its lowest, obviously. And that was the one that really kind of bummed me out is 60% of people have heard the term. We got 15% listening on a weekly basis. And I'm like, but this is growing. I mean, you're bummed yeah. out comparing it to numbers that are of right. course going to be bigger, right? I mean, 50, there's more males, but if you compare, you know, some other, some other well, thing about you as a male compared to all men, the number is going to be lower, right? Yeah, and it's so, still a decent jump, and we're talking 42 million people, so. Every week. Every week. Do you have 42 million subscribers, Dave? Are they all I, I do listening not. to the School of Podcasting? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, no. I think this number grows when connected cars are a regular thing. And it's always been held out as the holy grail, but we know we I, don't see any hockey stick growth in this See, medium. I disagree Do you really think that. it's going to? Good. Cause we, can we have my, some disagreement here? My car is already connected. When I get in my, because I, I have a smartphone with Bluetooth, it's, uh, I don't know what it is. It's not PhD connected, though. It's not push here dummy. I mean, it still feels no. like a little bit of work. That's I true. Never, that that that's might get the 55 over crowd. It would get me. Like, I'm, I will tell you, if I'm just going, especially a short distance, which is obviously someone who works from home, it's usually short distance, I'm not bothering Bluetooth. I'm not bothering with getting the podcast, even though. Yeah. Well, that's true. It wasn't easy. I had to go through a thing of pairing up my phone and that I had to jump through a hoop to get that. So you're right. If it's push your dummy ready to go, I, I think I, I don't want to say it's not going to help. I don't think it's going to be this giant hockey stick. I could be wrong, but I, I it definitely think, will help. I think the yeah. connected car would help if not for two things. One is the automobile industry is extremely slow. Uh, I think it was in the infinite dial study that they said the average automobile on the roads is 10 years old or something like that, 10 or eight something years like old, something years like that. Yeah. yeah, so consumers take a long time. I mean, I'm driving a car from 2001 and I'm not going to replace that Honda as much as I love it until um, it breaks to the point that it's more expensive to repair than to replace. So, um, and even when I do, I'll be looking at a car that's maybe two or three years old. So I'll still be behind in technology. I think that's the way a lot of Americans are. So the connected car will take a long time to catch on. And even if it does, I think the other thing that is going against it is um, the other technology that's advancing much faster and is far more accessible than a connected car, like earbuds, wireless stuff. Um, even, it sounds so redundant to call it such, but truly wireless earbuds, like the Apple EarPods, or uh, what I now have my eyes on and my ears out for, <laughs> pun intended, is the Ear In M2 earbuds that uh, have absolutely no wire. You've heard me in Podcasters Roundtable before talk about my Impal Bluetooth headset with a little magnetic connection and such. Well, I'd love to replace those someday with the, the truly wireless things. I think that kind of, not quite wearable, um, but something that's so small, so lightweight, so portable, I think that will overtake uh, pub public um, usage faster than a connected car will. Because like for me, as much as I'd like a connected car, I'd rather not have to do with disconnecting, reconnecting. I just want something to stay in my ear 
And it's playing when I'm on my way to the car. It's playing while I'm in the car. It's playing when I get out of the car. Yes, I know some states forbid that, but most states don't. Here's why I think, and Matthew, you're alluding to the fact that you think that this number will grow once the connected car. I think it won't necessarily bring in, it won't be hockey stick because it won't bring in a massive new listeners, but those who are monthly listeners making it easier, which I think is what you're saying, will increase the, the dirt, the, the regularity with which they listen, right? So potentially yeah. someone, if it's easier, it's there, you just might listen more if you are already listening. I, I want to say, I think Daniel, I think you were the one who tweeted it. It's like, what's that song that comes on when you want to listen to your podcast in the car? You know, when I connect my phone to my car, <laughs> the first thing that happens is a song plays. And yeah. so now I can't get ABC from the Jackson five out of my head because that's always going to start playing. Even if I was just listening to a podcast in my hand. So yeah, once, <laughs> once the, once the connected car where I don't even have to connect my phone or once the, the car play is more, is better integrated where, you know, it accepts that podcasting can be a default entertainment source. I, I agree. It's not going to be a hockey stick but it's certainly going to at least remove one of the barriers to entry. Yeah. The other barrier to entry that's lacking is the content. I mean, I still think we could use some explosive pop culture, blockbuster breakout content. That's just not there yet. There's, you know, we haven't had the, everybody in the world can't miss this. Yeah, Serial less time they're popular, but they're, they're still not, you know, they're not Marvel movie popular. And I think that's what we're still missing in podcasting. And I think, I think what uh, Matthew will soon find out, I believe two on the way, is that the numbers will <laughs> remain the same. The reason there'll be no hockey stick play is because all those people who are wonderfully transitioning into their car and keep listening to their podcast will leave because they'll have little ones and it'll be replaced by Moana <laughs> and Frozen and other <laughs> Disney classics. I'm, I'm sorry, you're not listening to your I'm encouraged by all the kid podcasts that are out there, though. I can't wait to see that there are podcasts for three and four year olds. I'm if you can you. make it the addictive drug that Disney is able to make it, then <laughs> then you get I'm your podcast in your car. I'm sure Dave Jackson has a few fans who say their kids just love his voice, and I'm sure my kid. Dave is going to start a singing podcast in the in the uh, based on Disney songs, and then I'm telling you that is going to be a hit. I know uh, <laughs> Eric K. Johnson says his kid listens, and they always go to the end to see if there's a Bernie clip. <laughs> they could care less about my show they just want to hear my cat nice all right so that's improving weekly that's that's good the numbers are improving every year we look at this that yeah. is that is the upside to all of this this next slide number 14 is the number i like seeing i think maybe the most of this it's the average time spent listening to podcasts among those who say that they have listened to a podcast episode within the last week the, the numbers seem kind of spread out, but the the mean or the average number here is last year was four hours and 10 minutes consumed per week. This year, it's five hours and seven minutes. The biggest areas of increase, um, like one to three hours, three to five hours, five to 10 hours, 10 hours or more, less than one hour, don't know. The biggest increase is in um, three to two, five hours, and 10 or more hours, those saw big increases. Isn't it one hour to less than three hours? Is that the big, what's the biggest increase from people? The, the, it went, it decreased from 40% uh, to 36% for one to three hours, but the biggest areas of increase are less than one hour, three to mm -hmm. five hours, and 10 or more hours five to 10 hours actually went down. I'm guessing those people who listened to five to 10 hours um, moved into the 10 hours or more category. And that's why that went up. So more people are replacing more, more podcast listeners are replacing more of their free or audio listening time, or even just media consumption time with podcasts. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've certainly done that for, I watch YouTube the way I used to watch TV, almost TV almost never goes on. And so YouTube is not podcasting, but my media consumption habits are changing and shifting. I mean, they're going to the phone, which is pretty much where everyone's going. Well, and that's probably because you found good content that fits you on YouTube. It's the same thing. I think once that podcaster tries one and finds one that they like, then they know, hey, it's worth going through the hassle of doing a couple searches to find the good stuff. How many podcasts do you have in your podcast catcher, Dave? 
uh, how many episodes or how many podcasts? Not episodes, <laughs> podcasts, shows, uh, different shows. Easily somewhere between 80 and 100. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure Dave ever recovered and whittled that down, but that's what happens to, I would say most people, you find a podcast you love, and then you realize, holy cow, there's amazing content out there that is speaking really to me that I can't get anywhere else outside of a podcast directory, uh, maybe YouTube, but, and then you just go crazy and you start subscribing to way more than you can listen to. I don't know. That's how it worked for me. So I think the new person, once they, once they find it, they do go out there and find a lot of stuff. Not that they listen to it all. I mean, I literally had to taper back a ton because there was a ton in there. I wasn't getting listened to, but I found it. And often they're listening to content in the same niche. Like for mm -hmm. our Once Upon a Time podcast, uh, we had a lot of people who listened to us and other Once Upon a Time podcasts. For sure. Same thing with Lost. People who listen to Lost podcasts listen to several of them. And that's, so it's, it's feeding that passion. Exactly. Look, at we're four guys in this case who podcast essentially about podcasting. We all, we're all in that same <laughs> niche. And I think we're all... We're not hurting for audience, even if we're sharing. I think a lot of, I think we share a lot of audience. Heck, I'm splitting my own audience with this show, right? We've got the podcaster studio and podcaster roundtable. When people find, I mean, you don't listen to, you don't listen to one Metallica song. You listen to every album they put out if you're a Metallica fan, right? I mean, so I always say there's room for another, another hit song. I mean, there's another, if, if you make great content in the same niche, you, it's going to be different. So, and people will consume it. I, Dave, you try every podcast about podcasting. You don't stick with them if they suck, but you try well, that, them. That's why I was laughing. I, I, I looked at my phone. I probably have close to 150 podcasts <laughs> in Overcast, but I'm going to guess a good 30 of these, ha they quit. They pod faded, and I've never yeah. removed them. So it's always like I'm always holding out for that you know, Ask a Ninja episode to come yes. back. Yes. I, I did finally unsubscribe from Ask a Ninja <laughs> up after, uh, I don't know, five, six years. You're going to get your head chopped off. So. <laughs> you know what I found interesting, by the way? The mean five hours and seven minutes, if you break that down a week, that's, you know, typically um, a average podcast consumer probably listens on the commute five days a week, an hour a day, half hour each way. Just something to think about when you're producing content. That's That's probably, you know, and what a lot of people say is like, just the right amount. Of, that doesn't mean you have to only produce half hour shows, but just something good to think about. When I had a commute, that's what it was. Somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes there and 24 minutes home. I yeah. think what you could learn from that as podcasters is if you have content uh, that's longer than 25 minutes is find some way to kind of break it up. Not like by having a segment, but just to kind of shift topics or shift perspectives or move on every 20 or so minutes. So that way, um, people are able to get an entire chunk in potentially, but with the way commute times and consumption works, you can never assume they'll stop listening right when you have your segment break. Yeah. I mean, and I always tell people don't burn three episodes of content in one episode. I mean, if, if their best stuff is buried deep, I mean, put that best stuff up front in its own episode. I mean, it's not the beauty is your podcast producer. You get to make these choices, but as Matthew points out, something to think about. This next one, number of podcasts listened to in the last week. Now, this one is so funny because, I don't know, it was in New Media Expo, one of the conferences, and these numbers were presented, and I went to Tom and I said, are these shows, like actual different podcasts, or are they episodes? And he said that they are, they could be an episode, it could be five episodes of the same show, same podcast, or five different podcasts. They didn't fix that, and then we had to ask this again. <laughs> so I don't know why they don't put that at least as a uh, asterisk or something, but number of podcasts listened to in the last week. People hold this number out like, oh my gosh, people listen to, what is this? Like, we had average of five podcasts listened per week. Holy cow, people listen to five different podcasts a week? Not necessarily. Well, but that that could play into what we talked about on the other one, the mean. It's like, if you have your favorite podcast that comes out on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like you have one show that you listen to that covers your commute there and back. And that's your five podcasts a week. Yeah. And then it's just people think people get super excited thinking that, oh, I have a show and they have a show and if people listen to five each. I'm good, but it doesn't, it's just not what it means. I wish they would make it a little clearer. Yeah. This is very close to what the numbers were in 2016. Yeah. Uh, the main so, shift is people went from three podcasts down to two it seems three went down two went up 
Daniel loves this next one. Oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours, Daniel. Okay. I'll, How do I'll you... cut you off when the rant gets too long. <laughs> How do podcast consumers listen to podcasts? And this is of all of the ways, so these numbers won't add up. Click on podcast and listen immediately, 77%. Download podcast manually and listen later, 41%. Or subscribe to podcast and download automatically to listen later. Twenty seven percent. I don't. I don't understand the question on the last part, but well, yeah, that's part of it. That's this, it. Each of these things are not mutually exclusive, and and they do have this. The next slide after that is, or soon after this, is something like of these, which one do you do most often? But these are not mutually exclusive, and in fact, I would say that many people who consume podcasts really don't know which of these they're doing and I, it's not to say it's an insult on the people who use it it's to say it's a compliment really on the smoothness of the apps now are, are you kidding me an insult we can't get this straight amongst <laughs> podcast nerds like it, how many episodes of the new media show do we have to debate streaming versus download and they use the terms different i mean it yeah. drives me insane like yeah it's well yeah. It, and it's not even to that but it's like for example I would say I click to listen to my podcast immediately for some shows. It's as soon as I see that it's downloaded, I press play on it. Oh I no, I press the play button and I listen immediately. I'm clearly streaming it. <laughs> this is not a fault of the consumer. Yeah. So we, wow. you know, take and this I, one with a grain of salt. I wish the last option worked better for me. I wish that when I got to my car, the daily was already downloaded to my phone the way I wanted it to. But instead, I wind up live streaming it basically in the car using data instead of having it on my phone via Wi-Fi. Well, see, in my case, crazy. everything of mine does download automatically ahead of time. And I, list, I press play whenever I see it. You know, certain podcasts, I decide, oh, I don't care what I was listening to before. This is the one I see now. I'm going to listen to this one immediately. So it's... Um, the, the lines between these are not very well defined, as well as I don't think people really know what they're doing right. or necessarily care what they're doing. I mean, to say here that the smallest number of this, subscribe to podcast and download omni automatically to listen later. And in this year's study, um, Tom Edison or Tom Webster talked uh, a lot about what he called podcast subscribers, those who say they subscribe. Well, the thing is... <laughs> If someone clicks on a podcast and listens immediately, that doesn't mean they're not subscribed. And, and the same thing if they download manually and listen later. What is downloading manually anyway? I mean, that makes me think, download manually and listen later, makes me think I download it from a website, I take that MP3 file and I drag it onto some other device, I take that device with me or maybe I burn it on CD and I listen to that later. That's what That's downloading what manually do. means to me. It means that I'm getting on a plane and I go download, 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 listen on the plane. But uh, I do we on a cassette tape like the radio, like Ray used to. Microphone <laughs> to the speaker. It works like a charm. I'm telling you, you could take interviews that way. It's amazing. Great, high quality <laughs> podcast. Does this matter? I mean, how much do we care about this really? Well, yeah. So the, the data of this, I think, does not matter, should not be used for anything legitimate. I really have to say this is based on wrong assumptions and anything based on this data is based on a false premise what this is really useful for i think the spirit of this is to recognize that most people say they listen immediately yeah i think there's a slide later on that says most people consume episodes within 48 hours of of it becoming available and that's the like better metric and the one that keeps yeah, us yeah. excited for what we're doing yeah, for sure. Number of podcasts subscribed to this one is, I, don't, I guess not. I was going to say this is more interesting than the how many <laughs> I listen to in a week, but it's not. Off on his own. <laughs> yes, Dave. He, he, Dave is the one they toss out. Yeah, because <laughs> Dave is ruining the curve here. But six podcasts. That, so we know. I mean, if you take this extremely nerdy group, subscribes to eighty podcasts, you listen to five of them, right? I mean, like so. It doesn't matter how many you subscribe to, it's how much you listen, yeah. but you can sort of correlate that with the other numbers, I guess. And, so and I, they're saying this is of those people who specifically chose the option to say, I subscribe to the podcast and automatically listen later. They say that they, quote, subscribe, unquote, to six podcasts. 
I, again, it's it's now based on a false premise because this does not exclude those who click on a podcast and listen immediately. If you use Pocket Cast, you don't have a choice and these numbers are legit because you have to subscribe to listen. Some apps are like that and actually drives me crazy. But in Pocket Cast, we got you. <laughs> we, as if I work on it. I love it though. You guys are doing a good job. All right, method monthly podcast consumers use most often to listen to podcasts. Is another one, right? Another Again, the same type premise. of thing. Let's move on. <laughs> we got a lot of slides here. We're not going to make it through <clears throat> all of them. Device monthly podcast consumers use most often to listen to podcasts. I, I mean, this the is shifting towards... The surprising thing here is, is that, that, yeah, although things are shifting significantly toward mobile, um, <clears throat> it actually shifted a little bit more toward PC this year. Somebody made a good point that even though we are all mobile first consumers, most of us still sit in front of a computer at work. Mm -hmm. And so I think more people, I think that accounts for why this number may have sort of bounced back a little bit is that, you know, oh, I discovered podcasts last year. Oh, why don't I listen while I'm at the office? And you know, that's your desktop. Back, I shared this in my episode 301, but back when iTunes first started supporting podcasts, um, there was a bandwidth issue with iTunes back end that would bring down my office network if we downloaded one podcast episode. I would hog the entire bandwidth for everyone on the network. So they banned iTunes during the day. <laughs> um, now the network has improved. They don't ban it anymore. I don't work there anymore either, though. But um, so I think maybe that's something similar where iTunes back in the day was something that was like, uh, we don't want anyone to install this on their computers. Uh, we're going to put a firewall in place so you can't access this stuff. Now it's probably a lot more companies are allowing iTunes to be installed or similar desktop podcast apps and allowing that kind of content to be browsed so more people are able to consume it on a computer than before. Maybe that's why it's increasing. Also, it could be increasing because of the demographics. It's those people, 24 to 54 year old, um, are increasingly going to their computer first to listen instead of to their mobile device. The next one is similar. Do we want to skip it? It's more mm -hmm. about device. It, mobile, yeah, mobile first. first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Years listening to podcasts. I'm not sure I've seen this one before. This how, for how long have you been listening to podcasts? This one remains interesting to me because it the the podcast subscribers the folks who are dedicated have been doing this for a while we're still not getting a lot of momentum with new subscribers is sort of how i'm reading this um you know have you ever listened sure more six months to a year less than six months are you a monthly podcast a little bit more but really when you get to the regular users those people have been doing this for at least a year so it, it takes a while i think for for podcasting to catch on and someone's psyche and to become a part of their routine Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Podcast listening locations, another of favorite of Daniel's. I believe you're a fan of this one. Um, this one is interesting of things. In at home is the top. Um, and these are they check mark all of them that they want. Um, mm -hmm. whereas the uh the next slide number 23 is where do you most often listen? Again, at home is the highest number. Um, in an automobile is next, then after that at work. I think that's interesting and um, very similar to what it was last year as well. That people, I would guess these are people maybe lounging at home or doing work around the house, taking a podcast with them instead of music. These are me. Watch this. Watch me go to bed right now. Good night. One earbud. Oh, really? <laughs> One side, other ends. I got stuff to listen to. When am I going to listen to these podcasts? I, I'm always surprised. I was every time I see this, I'm always surprised that the car is not number one. Just see, that's me. Well, we established that's a pain in the backside. <laughs> I agree, but I just, but still, amongst people who listen, yes, I'm surprised that it, you know you always see commuters travel. I just, it just always shocks me how many people. Well, sixty-five percent said they listen in a car or truck yeah. uh, that's after 84 percent at home i think it's kind of a time thing people spend more time at home able to focus on something other than work or focus enough on a podcast so it, it's 
uh, simply they have more time to consume it at home and they're using that time to do so. I know for me, I never am just sitting in a chair listening to a podcast. I'm always walking, riding a bike, grocery shopping. I'm always doing something when I'm listening to a podcast. So consequently, I'm never home. It's always in the car or out and about hiking, whatever it is, riding my bike. So that's why I was surprised to see home so much because I don't, I don't just sit and listen. But you are not. I'm not the average. Yeah, you're not the, you're Keep not your the 150 of podcast device. Uh, <laughs> Although he study. does have a landline, so <laughs> <laughs> time between downloading last podcast and listening to it. So this is, you know, I mean, Matthew, you were stoked about this, right? Did we jump all the way to that? I feel like I missed one in between here. Amount of podcast listened to. I did. I yeah. We I, yeah. I double clicked. That's okay. I mean, uh, it, both encouraging numbers. So the amount of podcast episode listened to, almost eighty percent say most, if not all, of the podcast. Great news. Do for... we do we believe this? I mean, do we? I think so. I mean, because man, when we talk in stats, you know, we know that like forty, sixty. Those are big numbers. This number is kind of incredible. Well, but when you survey someone, are they going to remember all the podcasts they listened to for three seconds and gave up on? No, so they're I'm gonna... saying like, do we think that this is? I, I, I mean, think it's if you exciting, have any, but, but, but yeah, but I mean, if you have a loyal fan base, I mean, if your subscribe rate is a certain number, there's a good chance that those people are listening to all of your podcasts. They're not abandoning you after three seconds. Yes. There's a lot of attrition. Have you checked your numbers on Stitcher? It's downright no. depressing. Well, that's well, always depressing. Depressing is all get Stitcher out. Stitcher so attracts what's the a difference? particular demographic. So you can't say that <laughs> your stats on Stitcher are the same as your stats for the rest of everything else. I'm not the only one that measures that way though, right? There are other services that measure so, uh, length of listen. And those numbers never seem to be good. So I don't know. I'm just curious. I don't know. The one we, so I'm using Omni for pod to pod and we find that there are, right, there's a few people, they click on the podcast and right away they've decided either, oops, I didn't mean to click on that or this isn't for me, I'm going to bounce or I hate the sound of that guy's voice. What am I doing here? But once people stay for a few minutes and, enjoy the content, they're not going to leave early. So I, I do think this is a, a valuable and truthful number for the most part. It's not reporting all the people that give up because they don't like it, but listeners, I think, are loyal to the content. Yeah. And and I, I, go ahead, Dave. You know, well, I just know I, I use Omni on one site and I use Awesound on the other, and both those have that stat. But the problem with that stat is the only way you can get that stat is if somebody's listening on your website. Yeah. Or... You know, there is a potential with the progressive download through like Wi-Fi or mobile data. Right. Right. I think that this doesn't say anything about the length of the episode necessarily. For example, I've started listening lately to the Podfathers podcast, No Agenda show with uh, Adam Curry and John C. Dvorak. And it's sometimes three hours long. I'll listen to most of it, I listen to all of the content, even their sponsor thanks section, or not sponsors, but they're, you know, they're knighting and all of that. I'll listen to all of that. I stop listening when they get to the stuff after the podcast, which is their like techno mixers, mixes and, and things that the fans have contributed, little music ditties and things like that. I stop listening to that. Or um, I can say this now publicly because she's changed her format. Jessica Rhodes, former podcast, uh, roads to success. Oh. I would listen to all of the content, but then as soon as that closing music, which for, at that time was what two and a half minutes long or something yeah. like that of a song, which listening to that song at two point two five x with smart speed enabled, it it just sounds like <laughs> literally that's what it sounds like. And um, so I would always skip that, delete the episode, and move on to whatever podcast was next. So even as much as of a podcast consumer as I am, I would say. I listen to most of the podcast, all of the content, most of the podcast. Well, it's good to make sure you have something at that. Like, I've always thought that Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me was very smart that they, right before they do the credits, they give you the, we're going to ask our panelists this question. And then the very last thing is their comedic answer to that question. So you sit through those credits, which normally you never would, uh, to be there for that last part. So people like who have- Marvel movies. Yes, yes. Why are you getting up during the credits? You know they're giving you something that you're going to want that, that has value to you. There's that's a, a good idea. There's a few podcasters that do that. Harry Duran, Podcast Junkies, does a, he does a, uh, he calls it the retention hashtag. 
So if you want to help promote the show, he gives a specific hashtag. I know um, Mark from Internet uh, Late Night Internet Marketing. He always just at the very end, there's like five seconds of pause, and then there's this weird tape rewind thing, and he just talks about what's going on in his life. And it's always like a brief one, two minutes. I was playing baseball with my son and he did this and that and that and blah, blah, blah. He travels a lot. So he has these little interesting stories about being in China or wherever he's at. So I know a few people do that. They'll throw some little Easter egg at the end. Yeah. And any good YouTuber knows, knows to do this, right? I mean, yeah. if you, the beauty of YouTube is you have, you have that locked in audience. You, you can measure things like time of duration of view and everything. And it is, you, the, the graph is so good that you can see where people rewind where they fall off where they come back where they jump to and you will start to see triggers i mean almost every youtube video will be like okay thanks guys you know or hey get subscribe and just boom i mean when you have those verbal triggers that that signify the end of your show we are done here i've got some follow-up stuff people bail so if you you give the listener something to actually stay for you're more likely to retain those people but it's good it's good news that podcast listeners are listening to most of the episodes i think that uh, well done advertising bears this out because i know that you know people there will be ads that are very late in an episode and they're still converting really well and you know that's more likely that that person who's made it that far anyways is probably more likely to convert but the point is they're hearing it um and i know we've seen that in podcasts that i work on that even a late ad can still perform very well. So, you know, it requires enough people sticking around in order for that conversion to happen. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, now we're up to the time between downloading and when you listen to it. And this is that, you know, 47% say within 24 hours, 20% say within 48 hours. So, I mean, two thirds are saying within two days of that episode coming out, they are listening. There's eight percent missing here. These numbers add up to only 92, whereas last year they added up to 100%. Interesting. Huh. This is this is obviously another thing advertisers like, right? If, if they want their stuff to be heard in a timely fashion because, it, I mean, you're better off not having time-sensitive ads, but that's not always the way it is. But Well, and as a podcaster, you're excited too because a lot of advertisers are only going to pay you for <laughs> for downloads within a short time period. So good to know that you know people are consuming quickly. Interesting. Public radio podcast listening. I'm not sure I care about that because oh, we need to skip here. Social media brand usage. Now, so, okay, this goes into social media. I think we, do we circle back around to podcasting on what they do? They divide us to share of ear, right? Well, one so, other thing uh, we skipped that is worth pointing out is that, um, let's see, the numbers are, let me just uh, add them. 70% of people listen to most of the podcasts that they download. Not of a single episode, but of all of the podcasts they download, they listen to most of those. So that's pretty good. percent is Dave Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, well, that's all right. I'm like, well, then we get back in that download versus click to play, but eh. yeah, people are listening. That's good. False right. premise. The social okay. media brand usage is another interesting one. This is it is interesting. For sure. Where it says that the U.S. population, 81% of the U.S. population follows a brand, um, follow, like, you know, engages with brands listeners on tend social to media. Follow. That, I, I got but this from your episode. Podcasters go, your... you know, 94% of podcasters, you know, follow brands on, it, it, on social media. Sorry, you're, that's the next slide. This oh, is that I'm they right are connected, that they use a social media brand like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, so on. 81% of the population does, 94% of the podcast consumers do. Right. And then there's more there, you know, obviously if you're into podcasting, you're probably into social media, you're into new cool tech as, yeah. as Daniel pointed out earlier. Sorry, this is slide 30 where it's uh, sev almost 70% of people, sorry, let's try this one more time. 31% <laughs> of people, general population, follow companies or brands on social media. Almost 50% of podcast consumers follow companies or brands on social media, which becomes really interesting when you go further on and you see how many podcast listeners are not using advertise sponsored, you know, advertise supported content, but they want to engage with brands, which means this is where they're going to get brand messages and they want to hear good brand messages. That's great news for the podcasters. Um, 
for the podcast producers and for the networks. And that's slightly up over last year. Make sure you have a Twitter account. This is the yeah, 31 is all the all the people who are using Netflix, Amazon, Hulu. So podcasters tend to cut the cord, you can sort of surmise from this, which means if they cut the cord, they're not watching cable, they're probably not watching uh, over the air television, which is all ad supported. They're watching Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, which has no ads. Right. So and they're not listening to radio because they're listening to podcasts. So how are advertisers going to reach these people? Podcasts. Yeah. That's, and this that's goes what along with that number. Us. This goes with the number of more people are shifting more of their time to podcasts, right? So yeah. Anything else? We got share of ear. So what's different here? Why do we move into a new one? Huh? That's uh, just a confusing one basically to say of all the audio you listen to, how is that broken up? Anything that you want to point out in here or, um, just it confirms what we've it, it, yeah what we see is confirms the general population only two percent only two percent of their ear time is dedicated to podcasts whereas when you look at the podcasters it becomes the majority or the largest section of their listening time is devoted to podcasts at 30 percent although we questioned if you are listening to podcasts and you have streaming audio why are you listening to Sirius XM or TV it, it the, the the numbers on this are a little strange to me but Good news is, is if you're a podcast consumer, you love podcasts. Yeah, once you once you get your toe in the water, you're you dive in. Yeah, cool. So we got to introduce more people to podcasts that they will like, so they'll go yeah. on their own listening spree. But uh, was there anything? Is there anything from this that, that you guys would like to see measured, Daniel? I mean, I would certainly think you have something. You're like, I wish they would ask this. <laughs> uh, the self-employment thing would be yeah. interesting um and that's a growing segment of the population so it probably will work its way in I imagine as a demographic i think more demographic questions would be good let's you find want to know out more about people yeah i want to know you know not just gender and age but you know let's find out ethnicity religion um, you know, let's get down into more of the details that are going to help people produce content appropriate to them. Let's let's find out if what I said about, you know, progressive versus conservative listeners is true um, or if I just, you know, made up that assumption based on how the numbers seem to play out and the trends. I'd also be interested in behavior stuff like how often do they try a new podcast? Um, where do they learn about a new podcast? Uh, like and um how often do they go looking for a podcast versus hear one recommended and check it out stuff like that how many of them produce podcasts too yeah that's probably a stark number (laughs) that would be an interesting question how many how many podcast listeners also produce a podcast yeah that's uh, yeah that number would probably sort of blow us all out of the water a little bit you think it would be pretty high i think it'd be really high yeah i mean it's it's Outside of Matthew, it's an almost the way it goes. Listen to a podcast, decide you'd like to do a podcast, create a podcast. Right? <laughs> Matthew's a little backwards, but I, I am the outlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we again we push Matthew's numbers out of the way and we get our real numbers. Awesome. Well, I mean, this is good stuff. Are you guys gonna change does this affect your shows at all or you just keep on trucking? For me, I was just happy that the numbers were still going up. I didn't think they we were in any kind of. I we wasn't hold our worried breath about every it. year, to, waiting yeah, for the dip. No, I don't. Nah, I don't think the dip's coming I for dip, you. Dip. I don't think the dip's coming. Period. Uh, until I think it'll go up every year, unless there's some. It has to be a ceiling, right? I mean, yeah, there's 100%. a ceiling. I don't think we're. Don't yeah, think we're, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> I don't think we're. Uh, I don't think we're close to it, but there's certainly no. a ceiling. No, no I think we got a long way to go. I, I think the only thing this changes is to pay attention to, like you said, everyone said before good content, you know, make sure you're not wasting anybody's time with, you know, even a good episode can have slow bits, get rid of them. Um, But also help educate new listeners. Yeah. There are people there who are going to be interested in your content, help them find it, help them subscribe, help them discover it, you know, in the way that is going to be most comfortable for them. Um, Because that, you know, any little barrier to entry is a lost opportunity. Matthew, do you use this to sell to advertisers? Is this fodder for you want to be on a podcast? Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, again, there's there's nothing more appealing than uh, affluent, educated, and engaged. 
you know that is what every advertiser wants um that whole they're not listening to commercially sponsored um content and this is where they're getting their messaging yeah i i think i think there are some folks who are a little too um optimistic about where advertising is going to go this year but like mm -hmm. the consumption rates i think that number is only going to continue higher um, as we put out good content and i think as people start to understand there are other opportunities other than just the fifty thousand, you know download episode as a potential sponsor you know a couple of hundred downloads it could be valuable to the right advertiser if it's attracting the right audience and that's where it gets tough right we've seen that big advertisers come and decide to leave because they didn't think it worked and there's a well, danger there right but it's yeah, probably yeah. because they were led down the path by the wrong person and put well, it in the wrong places well and, and somebody i was having a chat with made a good point i can't remember who it was but you know like if you're driving down the highway and you see a billboard for something that billboard affected you but when you go home and you try to remember what it was you're going to google it google's going to get the credit for that sale even though that billboard really started that conversion so the mm -hmm. same thing is very possible with the podcast you know i might hear about uh blue apron while i'm listening to a podcast but if i'm driving i can't do anything about it so when i get home i i google food delivery service podcast blah blah like something and now that credit sort of shifts away but you know the same way ford advertises a hundred times during the same football game uh recognition and repetition is just as important as straight conversion well and that's the key is why we still rely on the promo code right because we want people to be motivated to use our code so that they save money right so that we can connect the sale to our show and they get something too i mean it is yeah i'm not if i hear something and there's nothing of value for me other than maybe the podcaster said hey support our show you're gonna go and get your 25 dollars off or whatever it is but but even the first time you know if you said blue apron use my code today and i heard it the first time i was like i don't really need that right. but then a month from now my friend says you know i tried blue apron and i really liked it that's the second hit but you've now lost credit for it because i might not remember to go back so I think advertisers have to get more comfortable with the idea that these impressions are real and they're valuable and, you know, they are getting ingrained in people's minds. Well, this uh, is so why we, we hear the same advertisers typically on every show, right? I mean, Audible's still, going, <laughs> still going, Audible still going strong with promo codes. You're like, how is that? How's that happening? Everyone's got their free book, right? But <laughs> you know, they heard you. You know, you heard it six times. Another six other podcasts. That seventh one, you use that code, and and then that comes back around to you, hopefully as well. So I don't know. Probably a lot to be said there on a whole other round. But we will head out. Uh, great time digging into the numbers here. Probably something we'll look at again. This is fun content, or can be. Stir up the pot a little bit, and uh, I think Tom's okay. We, 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 we did all right. We didn't, no, we didn't, we didn't hurt anyone. <laughs> He's uh, he didn't break his screen. So thanks. Uh, I mean, definitely thanks to Edison. They, again, they've been doing this for so long. Um, you know, and that's why I don't have a problem featuring one company or one organization on a whole round here, because I mean, they are really doing something great for podcasting here. So we can pay it back a little bit and thank Edison and, uh, thank you guys for joining us. Matthew, your first round table. Make sure you let us know where we can find one podcast. Folds focus. Where would this audience want to go? <laughs> I mean, definitely pod to pod newsletter. You guys have to do that. If you're watching this show, you probably already subscribe, but if you don't, you're missing it. So do that. And then what for this podcast? audience, yeah. For this audience, pod to pod is where you want to be. That's where we're talking to uh great folks. I mean, I've talked to two thirds of this panel uh, in the past about podcasting and uh, you know, the kind of great stuff that they share. And that's the kind of stuff we look forward to give you on pod to pod. So we'll see you there. Awesome. Fantastic. Dave. You can find me over at school of podcasting.com. Always short and sweet to the point A pure pro Daniel. Thanks for joining us. I want to point you to a specific episode of mine, the audacity to podcast.com slash three zero one. It's my three and a half hour long episode. With your number, your percentage number is going to dip though. <laughs> yeah. You should check it out. Yeah. Full story of how I got involved in podcasting, the audacity to podcast.com slash three zero one. And I'm Daniel J. Lewis. Awesome. All right. Podcastersroundtable.com. We'll see you for the next one. 93. We're getting there. We're getting to the magic getting number. Close. I'd say, I think the hundred, I'd said the four year degree is a high school diploma. Episode 100 is basically the high school diploma for podcasters. So 
We're about to graduate, you guys. Get your robes. We're going to get a dorky picture. We should all have to wear graduation gowns for that round. I'm doing that. We're doing that. I have one in my closet. So. <laughs> of course you do. Dave doesn't unsubscribe. <laughs> he does. Uh, he, doesn't. he gets more domains. He collects stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing from that. 1980. Yeah, it's... that's going to be fantastic. All right. Podcastersroundtable.com slash guest. Sign up so you can be on a round. Wave goodbye. See everybody.